Hi guys, it's Doc Lewis here with Lure Making 101. This is a simple tutorial series for beginners with minimal tools, materials or experience. And today we're going to make the lipless dock a 50mm lipless crankbait. Now you may have seen this project in Fishing Monthly magazine. If not, go visit them at www.fishingmonthly.com.au and of course, for templates and tips, you can visit my website, makewoodenlures.com slash fishing dash monthly. As with our previous two projects, the first step is to outline the side profile of your lures. I'm laying these out on 12mm thick balsa. Next I'll slice the blanks apart using a sharp craft knife. Then I'll pare away most of the waste. You don't need to go right to the line at this stage, we'll clean up the blanks in the next step. Okay, now we're using our sanding block to smooth off the blanks and square them up. Here the block's being used on a flat surface at 90 degrees so everything stays square. I'll use a curved sanding block to shape those concave surfaces and make sure that those are square as well. By the end of this step we want the blank to look square if we look at it from in front or behind. Now I'm going to mark a centre line on the top and bottom of the lure. I'm doing this by eye, you can measure it if you prefer. Then lay the template on top of the blank and mark the location of the toe points, hook hangers and weights. Now we're going to drill for the hardware. I'm using a ballpoint pen to make a little divot where I want the holes to be, and then simply drilling with a 2mm drill bit, taking care not to drill into my fingers. For the weights I'm going to drill a line of holes using a 5mm brad point bit. These holes are close together so take care because the wood can become weak at this point. Now I'm marking the top profile of the lure using the template. Then trimming away the waist, taking care once again to keep everything square in cross section. Again, I don't need to go all the way down to the line, I'll finish off cleaning up the blank using a sanding block. One of the advantages of balsa is that it's so easy to shape even using a sanding block that you don't need to do everything with a knife. Now it's 
time to square the blank up so that we can get everything properly aligned and everything balanced and symmetrical. Now we can go ahead and shape our side profile. This is going to be slightly different to the previous projects. We'll mark the centre line down the middle and we'll mark the carving lines as usual. But the surface of the lure in front of the toe point is going to stay flat, so we're not going to round that off at all. Here I'm pairing away the waist between the carving guidelines to get the rough shape of the lure down pat. Note that I'm rounding the back half of the lure around the back and the belly, but at the front of the lure I'm only rounding off the belly and I'm leaving the upper surface flat. With the basic shaping done, I can finish off with sandpaper, refining the shape of the lure and smoothing it out. Be careful not to misshape the lure by sanding too much or by creating flat spots where you don't want them. Simplest crankbaits have weights at the front of the lure. What I'm going to do here is use a sharp knife to cut away the material between the holes that I've drilled. I want to open this up into a channel that's going to take several sinkers. Work gently because the bolsa is quite thin and fragile at this point, and it's not until we glue it all up that it becomes strong again. These are the sinkers that I'll be using. They're size triple O ball sinkers. I'm going to crush them a little bit flat and try and make them into more of a cube so that I can squeeze three of them into a limited space. You may need to use a knife to remove a little bit more timber or squeeze the sinkers up a little bit more to make them snug and cozy in the holes. happy with the fit of the sinkers in that hole, then you can glue the sinkers in place. Remember to use 24 hour curing epoxy because 5 minute stuff just doesn't last long enough. I've filled the hole up with epoxy, I've now squeezed the two sinkers in, and I'm filling up over the top of the sinkers with a little bit more epoxy. Once the epoxy is cured you can slice away the excess using a sharp knife. Now you're ready to install hardware. There are three ways to install hook hangers and toe points on lures. Screw eyes, twist eyes and through wires. For simplicity we're going to use twist eyes. But if you'll be using your lure for line classes 6 kilos or above, then I'd recommend using a through wire for extra strength. Here's how I make the twist eyes. I'm just bending this piece of stainless steel wire around a 3mm drill bit. Squeeze it up to form a loop. And with a second pair of pliers, you can twist the wire up to create the twist eye. Straighten it up, trim away the waste, and you're ready to go. I'm using the screw eye to work the adhesive into the hole, and I'm going to add more adhesive to the shaft of the screw eye before pushing it home to its final resting place. durability I like to harden the bolster. To do that I warm the lure up then brush it with a thin down coat of epoxy. 
You can find details about how to harden balsa on my website at the link below. Now we're ready to paint. Now as usual, if you're just getting started, you can always use Artis Acrylics, Model Paints or Lacquers, or duck down to the auto shop and buy some auto touch-up paints. But as for the previous projects, I'm going to use an airbrush. And I'll start by spraying the lure with a good coat of Auto Air Sealer. The sealer coat ensures that the colour coats that follow get good adhesion to the lure and give you a long-lasting and durable lure. Once the seal is cured, I'm going over the lure firstly with some white paint and then with some pearl white paint to give it plenty of glitz and flash. For the base colour, I'm using Auto Air Burnt Orange Metallic. This is great when you want an orangey metallic bronzy sheen and I use it a lot for crawfish patterns. Notice I'm building the layers up in several light coats and allowing to dry between coats. Once I'm happy with the richness of the burnt orange, I'm going to make up a simple tape mask that will allow me to paint the crawfish pattern. In the airbrush I've got watered down transparent black paint. And I'm just going to work it at very low pressure around the outside of that stencil. Now the stencil has some cutaways, which you'll see in just a moment. So once I've outlined the stencil, I'll, I'll remove the cutaways and start working my way around the stencil with the airbrush. This is one of those situations where less is more. Try not to use too much transparent black paint or you'll finish up with a dark, unsightly mess. I'm removing the stencil one segment at a time. I'm just puffing a little bit of transparent black paint around the edges of each stencil before I remove the next segment. I use Envirotex Light Epoxy for clear coating, which gives a tough and durable finish. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, for tips and templates, please go to my website, makewoodenlures.com slash fishing-monthly. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.